Uh, we have just finished the uh, Rio Paralympic Games, but uh, we wouldn't like to stop. That's why we are here to create an educational theme for coaches. I am very proud of our athletes and coaches because the management of the International Paralympic Committee said uh, judo had been one of the most attractive sports during Rio Paralympic Games. Uh, now uh, we would like to create a special educational theme for coaches and we would like to show that uh, to teach uh, blind athletes is not a magic. Everybody can uh, learn it and everybody can use it during the trainings. Uh, now uh, we would like to take a short insight into our program and we have a, a few special methods how to teach blind athletes and now we would like to show these special aspects of education and I hope we can involve more coaches uh, to teach blind athletes. Ensure that all obstacles such as shoes, chairs and training equipment are moved from the entrance to the dojo. It is very important that the blind and visually impaired athletes put their shoes, canes, clothes, bags and water bottles in places where they can find them. It would be beneficial for the athletes to put their things in the same places every week. Having designated places will help the athletes to orientate in the dojo. The coach should then show the athletes around the room. The athletes can use their feet and hands to feel the edges of the mat, which will again help them to understand if there is a drop-off at the edge. Please, take time with the athletes to show them all dimensions. Describe anything that could cause harm, such as posts and pillars. A suggestion would be that music is played at one end of the dojo, so that the blind athletes can easily orientate themselves. Also, having different texture mats on the edge will give the athletes confidence that they will not come off the edge of the mat. The purpose of this drill is to develop explosiveness for Uchikomi. In this practice, Geronimo is using a technique called mirroring. Miguel is able to feel his coach's movements by standing directly behind using feel. The style of coaching in this exercise is whole, demonstrate the exercise, part, break down the exercise into manageable parts and then whole, building the whole again.
all the way through the technique, the coach is describing in great detail what he wants the athlete to do. At first, Miguel doesn't get the action right. This is not a problem, try on an error. Geronimo is patient and explains with concise instructions what he wants Miguel to do. The key points to consider for this exercise are knees, hips and hands. The purpose of this exercise is to disturb the balance of your opponent. The key considerations of the exercise are movement, breaking balance kuzushi, and using your hands and shoulders to feel the opponent. Vitaly starts off slowly with very simple movements which will help Oleg to gain orientation of the dojo and to feel how his partner moves. It is very important that the judo movement is done with hands and feet together. To ensure that Oleg can feel his opponent during the movements, he ensures that body contact is maintained, mostly in the form of knee to knee for the O Sotogari. Oleg then introduces his Aguruma, which aids him to break his partner's balance easily. The pair run through a number of exercises that can help with feeling the opponent, including O Sotogari to O Sotogari in a continuous fashion. The same used for a Tani Otoshi into Tani Otoshi. This is a similar exercise but with a different direction that is being practiced. Vitaly is allowing Oleg to feel the movements and then Oleg is exploring many different judo throws that he feels fits the movement. The use of feel and feedback from the athlete is being demonstrated to great effect in these exercises. Alex is using different gripping destinations to get from one side of the gi to the other. Alex and Miguel are starting from a seated position to keep the movement down to a minimum. The next progression is to be done when stood up to allow the athletes to feel more movement in the upper body. Again, the athletes will grow in confidence and this should progress into movement. It is very important for the athletes to understand that just because they start kumikata in the traditional position of tricep and collar, they do not have to keep this grip. Alex demonstrates some different traditional grips for right versus right, left versus left and right versus left. This exercise demonstrates how athletes can get to their favorite gripping destinations using different gripping patterns. Chris wants to go high onto his opponent's back with his right hand, while he's taking the sleeve with his left hand. Sometimes his partner can be too strong, so he will change to a left-handed starting position. This will help him to get into the same strong gripping position, but it can be done differently. It is hoped this tactic will confuse his opponent and he can get to his best grip in more than one way. Oleg demonstrates another way in which he can switch from one grip to another. This is done when his opponent has a strong grip. Oleg uses his hands to change the angle of the grip. demonstrate through the form of randori how a typical VI contest differs from able vision. In VI Judo typically, Hajime to Matte is between 11 and 20 seconds and the time it takes to reset the Kumikata is between 20 and 40 seconds. This is something that can be practiced during special conditioning sessions that supplement Judo training sessions.
The energy demands on VI athletes is much higher as huge amounts of lactic acid are being pumped to the arms with longer breaks from Mata to Hajime. Chris demonstrates how he can replicate the demands during a conditioning session, 20 seconds hard work with 30 seconds rest. Normally, this would be done with 15 exercises, which equates to 5 minutes of work, the length of a contest, with a 5 minute break and repeat it 4 times. Any type of exercise can be used. It would be recommended that there is a mixture of strength and endurance exercises as this best replicates VI competition. How to best introduce judo so as to safety and to build the confidence of the young athletes? The teaching of breakfalls, ukemi, is important for the athletes so that they can get used to falling over and become more aware of what to do if they do get thrown. There are a number of ways to make judo-specific movements safe. An example would be to only do the throw from the end point. Encouraging ukemi and awareness of what the throw will feel like it is impossible to increase the speed of the throw. I know coaching in judo is very important uh, for a psychological state. They keep you positive. Uh, they g you up for sessions. Um, Leading up to competition, to keep you, you know, you, you your mind everywhere, your mind uh, in all all places. It flitters. It's like a it's like a butterfly, and um, the coach is very important in that sense of he calms he calms you down. He makes you focus uh, on what the job is at hand, uh, leading up to competition, and on the day is very important because you're very nervous. You know, leading up to competition, you're nervous, but on the day you're even worse. You're feeling sick, your guts churning. You, you want to go and hide in somewhere to so no open find you. But the coach has a very calming voice uh, and he's very important, especially in my judo. 
as in, I get very nervous in judo and, and special competitions and he's very calm and his voice is very calm. Um, we've also come up with strategies, uh, coping strategies and how, how to cope with nerves. Uh, so one way I cope with them is, is to sing to myself. Uh, it's to sing a specific song uh, from a film, Rush Hour 3. Uh, towards the end we have that song with Chris Tucker and Jackie Chan and, and it helps me to, to keep positive and, and just to relax myself before going to the mat. Um, but the, you know, obviously in judo you, you have losses. So, and, but then you go into the repertoire to fight for bronze. So you really do have to refocus, refresh, uh, calm yourself down, uh, make sure you, 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 know, you try to refocus on what you're doing, going to do next. Uh, it's extremely important to um, keep calm and it's, it's extremely important to remember what the plan is, the game plan. Um, and that's why I think you know, my coaching John's is, is very important in my judo, in my judo career. So my coaches, they, they work a lot closer with me than with other athletes. I think in judo in general you have to work very close with athletes, but if they are blind, it's more I need to feel if my coach is showing me something, I need to feel how he's doing it on me for example, or how he do it on someone else. Um, when we're running, he need to clap so I know where to run. Uh, give me the weight, so if I'm going to do squats, for example, with a weight, he gives it to me, then I give it back and then run to next coach who's clapping, for example. Um, I have training partner as well, and that training partner is like an extra coach for me. So. Um, She's showing me the techniques if we're in a camp. She helped me to find training partners if we're doing randori and uh, make sure I'm safe where I am so no one fall on top of me or something. Um, before competition we're watching videos together so my coach and my training partner are watching and then explaining to me because I cannot see the videos. So they tell me what they see and then we're discussing and it takes a lot more time than for a sighted athlete who can look herself. Um, yeah, if we're working on techniques, I need someone who constantly look at me and um, tell me if it's something right or wrong. Because I cannot look at my training partners or at videos and yeah, that's, that's a big difference. And during a competition, the matches before I'm up, they need to look at and see what the other people are doing, so I'm prepared. And uh, of course, help me to find my things and you know my shoes, make sure I got the white gi or the blue gi because I cannot see the colors. And um, yeah, a lot of things. A coach, <laughs> a coach needs to be really, really close. It is very important that the coaches are very aware of all athletes on the mat, especially when they are fighting. Rondori is the best way to put into practice the technical work that all athletes have learned. The best way the coaches can do this is to ensure that they step between the two sets of partners practicing. The coach should use the word jogai when the athletes are nearing the edge of the mat. It is our responsibility to ensure the safety of the athletes. The best way is for two coaches to be watching partners and they can go back to back to protect both pairs. Oleg Kratzel was born in 1975 in the town of Kishinev in Moldova. His journey in the world of judo started at the age of 10 years old. In 1992 he was champion of the USSR and in 1996 he became European silver medalist. In 1996 he took part in the Olympic Games in Atlanta. In 1997 he was married and nine days later on the 9th of September he had a horrific car crash where he lost his wife and two more passengers. Oleg survived but lost his sight in the accident. 
Two years later, he started to train judo again in the Republic of Moldova with his coach, Vitaly Klicker.